not a secondhand coat. I want a yacht, not a cheap little boat. I tell my daddy not to be depressed. All I need for happiness is the best. I want a dime and nothing else has a peel. And when it comes to men, you know how I feel. I want a real man. Give me a real man, you know what I mean. I want a real man. Oh, real man, you know what I need. Hey guys, what's up? Who that? How you doing? Hey, my you that? Hey, what's up? Welcome to Real Men. This is the magazine show where men get real. Really real. Let's meet the panelists today. Why don't we? Hey? We're serving up some of the Dwayne Hill on the Real Men new Real Men menu. Say how hi. are you, Dwayner? Say hi to my posse on the yard. <laughs> also, Kadar is here. How are you, man? Well, I'm, yeah, that's it. Good to see you. Uh, Ted Dykstra <laughs> dropped in. You like that? I just say dropped in, Ted? Isn't I'm lubricated. Cool? <laughs> Lori Elliott's with us as well. Good to see you, Lori. Good to be seen. Right on. And we're joined by a very special guest on this episode, actually. Victoria <laughs> Pratt, star of Mutant X, is here. Hey, Victoria. Hello. Thanks for coming in. Thanks for having me. And we'll get this episode kicked off with that same Lori Elliott from before there. Go ahead, Lori. Hi. Okay. In this segment, we're going to be talking about boy gangs. Now, the only thing that I can really tell you about boy gangs from my childhood is when my dad made us watch West Side Story, and the guys got stabbed and did this. Boy, boy, crazy boy. <laughs> That's all I know, really, about <laughs> gangs. But I did look them up on the internet last night, and I came up with some signs, if you're a parent, to find out whether your kid's in a gang or not. Number one, he drives a Lexus. And he's 13. <laughs> <laughs> Number two, he has a dog named Satan. And Satan packs. Number three, oh, when he goes out to play after school, he doesn't say play. He says, I got to go take care of something. And four, he shoots people in the ass. <laughs> and he likes red scarves. I don't know. I also think that parents have a big responsibility to their, to their kids when it comes to whether they're in a gang or not. Show them some love. Show them you care. Listen to them. And then maybe they won't go out and shoot people. That's all I've got to say about gangs right now. Back to you, Tim. Nice job, Lori. Jump in here, and we'll talk about this. Youth gangs, boys in particular. Uh, what about, uh, is there a positive side to any of this? Kadar, let's start with you, Kadar. Like, what about like sports and teams? Aren't they a gang of sorts? Yeah, man, yeah, man. If they provide a service <laughs> to the community <laughs> What happened large. to Kadar? I don't know. Kadar, what's up, man? Well, what are you done with the real Kadar? Well, no, I'm mean, if you talk about real men, right? <laughs> well, well I, right now, I keep it real. Kadar, the important man. thing for gangs, if you understand it, if the gang then provide a service within the community, <laughs> And it helped the community. Just like if the community deprived, depressed, and the gang them go out and bring in kind of like a Robin Hood concept. <laughs> Victoria. Taking from the rich, bringing it into the ghetto. I want to welcome Absolutely. Victoria Pratt. <laughs> Victoria Pratt, star of Mutant X, thanks for coming gangs. in. What do you think? What do you think so far? <laughs> She'd like to go home. Man. You love me. You love the bad boy, eh, Victoria. You no, know, girl, you love the bad boy. <laughs> What, if, what about it, Dwayne? Are youth, youth gangs as bad as Lori thinks? Uh, me, I'm Sia Kadar. You did not get the part. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> anyway, uh, youth gangs, I mean, they're horrible. Youth gangs are awful. That's yeah. the you know, home of the box cutter. And the worst thing is in the States is the fact that they actually, box cutters became so prevalent and they have, they have metal detectors in high schools. There's a good sign for your high school. Oh, yeah. That they actually, some guy who will, will rot in hell invented plastic box cutters and they sell them in the variety stores. And that's the worst thing. It's like, you bitch, ow, oh, I'm cold. Oh, I'm, co I'm bleeding. I'm, oh, oh, no, I've lost all the nerve. It's damaged. It's permanent, you know. You got like 16 year old girls, these horrible, these call them Glaswegian scars in Glasgow. You got them in Barbara. Oh, that's right. Let's talk to Ted Dykstra. Scars. Ted, were you a big gangbanger? Gang banger? <laughs> gang banger? <laughs> How did we get there? I, uh, Ted, we all know. That's none of your business. Well, I'm, I'm confusing you with my street cred. Well, uh, thank you for your street cred going down. I'm, I'm the one with the street cred on this show. <laughs> The only gang I ever belonged to probably was a bunch of us when we, we went out and stole some bullets from a car, and then we went out to our fort. We had a fort in the woods, and we made a fire, and we felt guilty about the bullets, so we threw them all in the fire. Thinky, thinky. And, uh, <laughs> and then they all started going off, and it was like machine gun fire, and we all dove, and one guy got hit in the head and just 
glanced across his forehead, and after that, I figured out that hanging out with a whole bunch of guys was probably not a good idea. Now a gang for me is a poker game. That's it. Wow. Where'd you find bullets? We found them in someone's car who was working on a construction site, and his window was open. He had all these cases of shotgun shells and 22s, and we'd, we thought, wow, bullets. I've never seen a bullet. So we were looking at the bullets, and then we went, oh, my God, the police and everything else, and we threw them in a thing. Throw the, yeah. throw the bullets in the fire. That's a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> because yeah, if you, you steal like, bullets, that'll clear throw the them in the fire. No. Brownies? Or the did microwave. You ever go to brownies? I, I didn't go to brownies. That was a scary gang. Yeah, I went that once. is a gang. I, I didn't even want to go ever You just went once, Victoria? They danced around a toadstool. I was like four or something, and I thought, what is that? But some of these people are really into it. Oh, for sure. Like yeah. brownie creepy. maniacs. Were you living so in, in you're LA, right? Yeah. So it, do you? Is it scarier there? Like, it's can just, I tell you, I've been downtown twice. Really? I've lived there for four years. There isn't really a downtown, actually, is there? I mean, well, there, there is yeah, a downtown, there's a downtown, but downtown. you don't no one, go there. Yeah, yeah exactly. my, actually, a, a mutual friend of ours, Kevin, to, I, I'm like, I found this video store in L.A. I'm like, I got to go to this video store. It's called Mondo Video A Go Go in L.A. And the, That's where those, they sell all that porn, right? Yeah, well, uh, yeah, well <laughs> prison, uh, prison based. Uh, porn. Uh, there's an actual that's theme. different, though. It's prison yeah. based. That's you cultural. girls aren't getting out of this jail unless you sleep with me, which will eventually happen. <laughs> Just keep watching. Yeah, but the whole idea, I'm back, the whole yeah. idea of gangs is the sense of community oh, and that's the yeah. that's I think that is the predominant thing with them is they need to feel that they belong it's kids who feel like they don't the belong at home it, they right? don't know them. they're yeah. alienated so they they're go, outside yeah. I think it's uh, number one the parents responsibility you have to make your kid know that they're important yeah, but the, kids, the kids in the gang free. don't have a parent like that that's exactly the whole that is the problem all right let's jump out and sell some stuff thanks to v Victoria Pratt Libraries for dropping in when we come back, we're going to talk about Lord of the Flies and would a world run by boys just go straight to hell in a handbasket? When we come back. It's not like. Yeah, I know, but. Wow, if you didn't recognize that, that's Victoria Proud on Mutant X. And she joins us today. That was cool. Stop. What kind of, you got like a nine foot vertical jump there. I, I'm just very comfortable in a harness. <laughs> okay, so you're on, you found your show, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we're going to get this segment kicked off with uh, Kadar with a little commentary. Go ahead, Kay. Yes. And we're reading from the book of Jervis. And the boys did come. And they did take the land, and when they took the land, they took all of it, and it was good. They killed the young one with the glasses and used his glasses to make fire from the power of the sun. They then searched around and saw pigs and did stabbeth the pig and did not eat it because pig was at that time full of poison and demons and sin. And they did find an Xbox and they did play all day because it was just them. And they did have jello pudding all day. They did not wash their underpants for it was just them. Then later on that day, they did not go to school for there were no schools in that city at that time. And they did not wash, nor did they not covet, nor did Tim. <laughs> Good job, Kadar. That was, uh, yes, excellent work. <laughs> Grab some couch there, man. And let's talk. About, we're talking about what if boys were in charge? Oh, is that what we're talking about? I think that's what we're talking about, Chad. Oh, of course. Ted, what if boys were in charge? What the hell? Oh, I think boys are in charge, and I think uh, we're probably all going to hell in a handbasket. I mean, um, but let's the, face it, hell's full of boys too. Hell's full Yay. of boys too. Yay. I thought Victoria Pratt looked pretty much in charge in that clip, though. I mean, uh, I'd like to invite you on my show. I'd love to be on your show. I just want to kick all your ass. You know, comfortable in a harness. I want to show you how women take charge. I, you know what? I'm not usually a bottom, but please do. <laughs> please. please. Ted will break his talk. Now he's rule. using S and M references That's in right. using casual More talk. More street cred right. for Ted. Yeah. That's right. Ted's All refurbishing right. the street yes. cred on the way out after he said. Email it. me. Yeah. But if boys were in charge, it wouldn't be much different from how it now, how it is now with men being in charge, because men are just basically older boys. Oh, there yeah. would just be a whole lot of game playing and 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 free stuff like free sex and 
Do boys have sex? Yeah, but boys have that. They're not afraid of their uh, yeah. mortality. There's no when mortality. Kids. Yeah, they're, but all the guys, weapons would be made of Lego. <laughs> dogs, aren't afraid, dogs aren't afraid of cars until they get hit by one. Yeah, exactly. You know, like, like Robin Williams, I think, says that you know boys are like are just little Nazis. You know, without the uniforms, like dude, we're just evil. It's like. Yeah, we're killing grasshoppers. Well, I'm pulling the wings off flies. You'll have to wait for me. I'll be here in a minute. I mean, we're just like oh, a little yeah. torture. Well, you know, I've, I've been saying it all along. Dwayne is like a big kid, man. He's like, granted, 6'5 and about 290, but he is. He's a big kid. And well, I mean, it's, it's true, but if, if you actually, I mean, if you want to get serious about it, if you go to any country that's war torn, any country that has a lot of conflict and strife has a ton of 14 to 17 year old males. That's who kill. I mean, they're the ones who kill because they don't know their own mortality mm -hmm. and they don't care. Yeah. And they're they really the ones care. that the other countries invading go for. Ex exactly. <laughs> Exterminate. Like, you, you know, you go Sierra Leone, it's crawling with 14 to 17 yeah. year old boys and they run around with like AK 47s that are as tall as they are and they just shoot people and laugh and laugh because <laughs> <laughs> they're boys. It's all about. Um, uh, starting off with the young. You get the young, you'll get the culture you'll further on down the road. So they always want to start off with getting young people. What do you they're think, Victoria? More, they're bored. Victoria, are boys yeah. in, indeed in charge, like Ted's contention there? You mean, do you think they're in charge of the now? world? Yeah, like uh, the economy no. and and uh, the no, banks, and you think there's a lot of women running all. I mean, I'm not saying it's We're not, not talking about better. women and men. We're talking about boys. Boys, yeah. okay, but I'm the saying that big men are big boys. Prepubescent little. <laughs> okay, no, they're yeah. not running the world. I must concede that <laughs> point. I tried to get a loan from the bank <laughs> officer. He picked his nose and flicked it on the wall. <laughs> so then I said, "Can I please get a loan?" And I wouldn't do a thing until I held his milk above his head. The Prime Minister, Minister is getting a spanking feeling. tonight. Do you know what? If boys were in charge, the streets would be empty because all the boys would be locked in their bathroom with their hands in their knickers and be like, yeah. <laughs> this is the street, I, know. Go, go, I think the girls out. would rule in about a week. Yeah. Exactly. Because they don't masturbate. That's <laughs> Victoria said knickers. <laughs> Meanwhile, back at the lab. Knickers. What knickers? I like knickers. <laughs> so we'd just be masturbating. I think she's yes. right. Yeah, like, yes. Oh, but we, that's what we're doing and anyway. I Why not? I know, but you're not trying to run. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Ted's you nuclear power plant is on hold for 10 minutes while he goes. Down your pants. Well, it's true, but once women discover the hand down the pants thing, then it's like, it's rain and hands. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> you know, it's, <laughs> masturbation slows us all down, let's face no, it. No, it doesn't slow us all down to the same degree. <laughs> <laughs> Some people are efficient with it. That's right. Oh, Lori, so Lori, how fast can you? Nice, Never mind. Let's get out of here before we oh. degenerate any farther. That's a good segment. Let's call it quits. I let's come back. After these messages, we're going to talk about healing I a broken no heart. Idea. We're going to shift gears on Real Men. Healing a broken heart when we come back. We're joined by Victoria Pratt. Stay with us. No, no. Well, that's how it came across. Either that or you're, you're very fast masturbating. masturbating. Hey, welcome back to the show. We're going to talk about healing a broken heart on this segment. I don't know. Victoria, have you had your heart broken? I'm thinking you've probably broken a couple of hearts. Um, <laughs> you know, maybe. maybe. Maybe I have. I've had my heart broken once. Have you? Yeah. How did you were, were you devastated? I was. And I don't know why. I don't know if it was just because I got dumped or what, because that was a very yeah. new sensation for me. I didn't like that. Yeah, I'm sure you're not used to getting dumped. <laughs> I'm looking at Victoria thinking you're probably not dumped on a weekly basis. <laughs> so how did you get over it? I, you know what? I don't, I don't know. I guess it, you just sort of eventually move on. But I've always been a firm believer in retail therapy. Mm. Retail therapy. Mm -hmm. Yes. I like Shop that phrase. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah. And the haircut. Yeah. And revenge is always good if you can find any way to get revenge. Yep. Revenge is Just nice. any revenge is any good? Random revenge. Victoria breaking out with the good advice. <laughs> Somebody ordered pizzas to my house and then shot out my tires. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I think it might be my ex-girlfriend, Victoria. And you know who you are, sweetie. <laughs> I like the guy in the film. I saw this movie once. I think it was Beautiful Girls, and the guy would plow her snow up and jam her uh, oh. garage door shut with the plow. You know, See, that I was wish pretty funny. I had a snow plow at the time. <laughs> uh, you would have run it off the road. Uh, yeah, screw the snow plow. How thing. long did it take you to move on? Oh, I don't know. This was a long time ago. <laughs> yeah, this, she has to really search the memory bank. Well, well then you went to grade seven, and I went to a different school. Well, that's right. Over. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, what about you, Laura? Use the phone anymore. Oh, yeah, I've been dumped. How do you get over <laughs> the broken heart thing, Laura? Uh, I oh, yeah. Cried. You are lying. I, I phoned my friends and 
phone my mom and stuff. I, I, I as a woman, I talk about things, and I, 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 I'm gonna cut my hair off this time. I know I will, but then I don't, and I just change the style. But like, I talk and stuff. But guys seem to want to just go out there and have sex with as many women as they can. Well, they did while they were dating her. Now they're free to go. <laughs> You know, it's like now it's more unbridled. Wayne. I miss you more than ever. Hey, God, that's better line. <laughs> hey, how you doing? Oh, Married, so not buried, I hope. You know, Wait, what about you people Kadar? make me establish contact. Have you ever had a broken heart, Kadar? Oh yeah, yeah. How and did you get and over? And you it, fester. I think guys fester uh, yeah. longer and, yes. and worse than women. Yeah. You, just, no, you don't want to go anywhere. No, no those those guys. Because we don't true. talk. For you don't want to go anywhere. Talk. You don't want to talk to anybody. Yeah. You fester. You don't you talk think, anyway. How could she do this to me? <laughs> it's me. How could she dump me? Do I was get, supposed to dump her. Do we tend to get piss tank. Yeah. You know. I was gonna say booze and time. Booze and time. I get what, very drunk and then date Lori for six months. <laughs> yeah, the, 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 the retail therapy is the and liquor store for guys. Me. Sorry, Laura? Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Only Lori is the, she's the most polite <laughs> cast member we have. <laughs> Lori, what's that? Oh, nothing. Nothing, I'm sorry. I apologize. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> speaking of turn, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, you were saying that I sober up and I don't date you anymore, and that's so wrong. But it is funny when you get these calls in the blue. It's like, did you just break up with someone? You know what I've I done have a before? Feeling. Is I've been like dumped, and then I phone my ex-boyfriend up, and I've been like, hi, I just want you to know that you know, like, you're the best boyfriend I ever had, and you know, and then they like tell me that you know, oh, that's nice and stuff. And we, I, a lot of people like phone exes. And try and just like forget oh. that they'd ever even gone out with the person that dumped or, them. Or they just, or, or exactly, or they spill their heart and it's like, that's not what turned me on about you in the first place. I love you and I miss you. And it's like, oh, you're just so pathetic now. I just can't. Okay, I'll just keep going. <laughs> La -da -dee -da -da. <laughs> No I, broke up, I broke up with a girl once and, and she got back at me by telling me all the things that she was going to do if I had stayed with her. Yeah. Oh. Pretty good. Oh. Like, what? like, yeah. I'll just, <laughs> Stuff, you know, it's like the price not, is not, right. not so much sexual stuff, but just in general, like she, she said to me, I would never have left you ever, you know, just talking about how loyal she would have been to me and stuff. <laughs> Tim but. Steves, if you had stayed with me, you would have won this wonderful Fabergé. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Ooh, and ah, uh, built for the Ming Dynasty, and now it could have been yours, but you broke up with me because I like to sleep with your friends. <laughs> Dwayne, have you broken a lot of hearts, man? Oh God, I just, I, I just, just a trail, trail of uh, there's still blood on my shoes, and it's slippery <laughs> and sticky at the same time. No, uh, I, you know, I think my first breakup was my toughest because that was like, because yeah. that was it was mutual, but more for her, more her going get the hell out of my life, and it was and it was tough because I never it was like oh that's rejection. I How is that mutual? Oh, exactly, <laughs> I mean it's always mutual except one person's always like, hey, should I call and say oh you're having sex right now? <laughs> oh that's great. Well me too. Oh. Jeez. <laughs> There's no, we were never friends to begin with. What am I kidding? You know, it's like, we'll Jump be friends. Jump in here, Ted. Um, uh, You're same, conspicuous in your absence, buddy. Same, same, well, I'm just trying to remember the worst one was the same. It was the first one. I was in high school. It was one of those things where, you know, I just like you as a friend. And that's the hardest thing to hear from someone that you actually love and that you actually think you have a future with. And you're thinking everything is going great. I mean, great. You're in love. And then they, they lay that on you, and it kills. It killed me. It took me two years. Did you cry? Wow. I cried like every day. See? You did yeah, absolutely. Not. Yeah, I was devastated. So did I. What, you, you can't see Ted crying? You, you cried? <laughs> no, but if you, guys, if you guys find that can attractive. Can you give us a demonstration? <laughs> Ted can weep on command. Watch. Yeah. He's, he's an on command weep. He did two years of Les Mis in Oshawa. He yeah. can cry. <laughs> <laughs> I can't do it when Dwayne's on the show. <laughs> Jean Valjean, you are wanted by the gendarmerie. I thought it went really well today, people. I thought it went fantastic. You know, I've been accused of being gay by him on about nine episodes of this. I just want to say I'm a happily married man with a beautiful child. He's a single man. He's, He's 35. He rents a house with three other single men who are 35. There's a woman Nicely said. Answer. Let's jump out. Mm -hmm. I don't think he's saying you're gay. I think he's just no, saying he's you're a big puss. Theater. We're coming back after this message <laughs> and we're talking about broken hearts today on Real Men. Stay with us. Hey, welcome back to the show. This episode, we've been joined by Victoria Pratt, star of Mutant X. Thanks for coming in, Victoria. My pleasure. And we've been talking about broken hearts and stuff. And Kadar, you had a breakup story, man. I want to hear that. Yeah, okay. Tell me if I'm wrong. I mean, tell me You're if this is totally wrong. wrong. Dead wrong. We're at a wedding. 
<laughs> my girlfriend and I at the time. And uh, the fellow that's up there that's getting married, both friends of ours, he's there waxing eloquent about his new bride. He's like, you know, you're my best friend. Uh, I, can do, I can't do anything out without you. When I'm with you, I feel I can do anything. And I, in the moment, looked at my girlfriend and I said, I can't say that about you. <laughs> Right there yeah, at the horrible. table in the reception. Wow. Am I wrong? Was the timing yes. off? You were wrong. You but you know what it was? Sure. The pendulum. So no, I took it. I'd say that was a brain fart. No, may yeah, maybe I was just desperate to get the out of it. I don't know. Regard. But the pendulum just swang her way. And I used to sing that Michael Jackson song, It's the Things I Do for You, in return, do the same for me. But she didn't know that song. <laughs> and he was referring to Boy Scouts. <laughs> what did she do? What did she what, do? It just swung one just way. Happened. It's the, everything was me, did me, she me. She didn't what know happened? how to give. What happened? No, how she did didn't she cry. She, she just had nothing. That's why I thought I got out of it. I go, maybe she didn't hear me, but she heard me that <laughs> night. <laughs> yeah. So That's that horrible. was it. That's how it ended. You should never do anything big like that at a person's wedding. At least wedding. it wasn't exactly. your wedding. Exactly. But they didn't she know. Was not that day. They didn't know. She What's the stupidest thing you've ever said to a woman, Dwayne? I broke up with a girl during my own circumcision. I was like, maybe it's a, I just don't feel the same way about, I, I don't know. Stupidest thing I've ever done with a girl? Well said. <laughs> 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 break oh, stupidest thing I've ever said. Oh, I said, like, just run a... We're in a best of Dwayne right now. It's a clip of stupid <laughs> things that I've said to and about women since this show started. I don't know. <laughs> Lesbians are delicious. There's a dumb one. Um, <laughs> let me see. I bet I can throw you further. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Smell both fingers and tell me which one's better. Okay, that's plenty. Oh, Ted, no. save me quick. Um, uh, I can't save you from Dwayne. No one <laughs> can save you from Dwayne. Saving me from the Dwayne. No, it can't oh, be done. Sweet. But I had the same experience that Kadar did. I went to the princess bride with a girlfriend, and afterwards she said, I would like you to be my prince, and I just went absolutely dead cold. I just went, oh, my God, I can't believe she said that. I can't be just with her Just from a corniness? Anymore. You ain't just, yeah. just because, I, no, it, just, it was just the wrong thing to We're say. We're out of time, and everybody. Went, Thanks to Victoria Pratt for dropping in. Yay. You mutant X star, Yay. you. <laughs> Thanks a lot, panel. Great job. Thanks to all the crew on Real Men today. We've had an awesome one. Oh, Thanks for coming no. in. We're out.